just trying our best to hear the voice of the Lord and respond accordingly. Uh, so many times people say they want to do the will of God until they ask Him to do something and then their excuses begin to pile up. Uh, I remember the story that Jesus was talking about when He said, you know, come and follow me. And they said, well, you know, I, I just bought this piece of land and, you know, I got to go check it, you know. And, uh, my parents are getting old and I like to hang around here at least till they die and, you know so many excuses that people make for not doing the will of God but he said if you're not willing to forsake uh, father mother sister brother husband wife whatever for my sake you're not worthy to be my disciples so my prayer to God is that uh, even though we want to be compassionate and kind towards our uh, family members well we also need to realize that we have a responsibility to Occupy the office that God has given us to occupy until Amen. he decides to take us home I'd like to pray pray a special prayer tonight for Bonnie Stevenson. She uh, uh, Bonnie Stevens. I mean she uh, She has cancer a very extensive uh, Form of cancer and she's decided just to let it run its course. She stopped her chemo and Radiation and she's just going to trust God uh, Either he'll heal her or he'll take her home and so we want to pray for her tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for Bonnie that, Lord, you would just strengthen her, Lord, during this time, Father, of transition. I pray that, Father, whatever your will and purpose is for her life, Father, that you would bring it to its completeness, dear Lord, and that she, Father, would one day enter into that land where there's no more sickness, sorrow, pain, or death. I pray for Ruth tonight as she, Father, is mourning, and Father, also celebrating the home going of her sister. And I just yes. pray in Jesus' name that Father, you would just bless the Father that service down there, that uh, those that may share, Father, would speak the gospel. And dear Lord, that folks that may be lost, that may attend the service, would come to know Christ as Savior and as Lord. And I pray that you bless our study here tonight. Let us magnify and glorify your name, and we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, Pastor Chris sent me something today on uh, uh, off of YouTube, and uh, I just thought it'd be good if I played it for you. It's pretty intense, um, and if you don't like intense, then you might not like this, but uh, like he said, I listened and I wept, because we are living in a very volatile time right now when it seems like uh, people, and, and I was thinking about it tonight while I was praying, um, we're somehow thinking that if we can change the political climate that things will get better and then I started thinking well, wait a minute our confidence is not in the political climate or whoever is going to be voted into such and such office don't get me wrong I I vote and I am going to vote for the people that stand behind godly principles and stand for what's right and stand for life uh, but I'm not dependent on that because if it doesn't happen, uh, and God knows this is true, if any nation deserves judgment, it's America. 63 million babies murdered. Um, you can scoff at that, you can make light of it, saying you know that, that it was necessary, but I don't believe that it was. And all of those lives that have been taken, I think God's looking down and saying, listen, if you think I'm just gonna wink at that, you've got another thing coming. And then all the other things that are on the agendas that are out there that people seem to fight so passionately about to try to keep uh, that it's sinful. The, the Word of God has to be the final answer for whatever we decide. Uh, so I am of the opinion that because of our sin, judgment is looming at the door. And so I pray in Jesus' name that we would just understand and know that uh, as this little video thing here is going to talk about run for your life. So I'm going to play it for you, okay? Listen to me like you've never listened to me ever in your life. We have got to lay our lives down
I hope you that are maybe picked this up later will listen closely to what was being said there by Carter Conlon uh, that was shared shortly after um, the towers had fallen uh, in New York City back on 9-11. Uh, so, um, and yet it's, it's, it's a sad day we live in when we have forgotten uh, the God who has blessed this nation and blessed this country with so much. We have had so many things that have been given to us to enjoy and yet now we are more prone to want to be enjoying ourselves rather than becoming a holy people uh, that are looking uh, for the blessing of God. And, uh, we have been studying um, the book of James. Uh, if you want to get your Bible or uh, follow along with us in the scriptures, uh, we are in chapter 1 and we have been in chapter 1 for <laughs> quite some time. Hopefully we'll get a little farther along tonight, just uh, wanting to not belabor a lot of the things that uh, and repeat the same things over and over again. Uh, but I am going to read uh, from chapter one verses one down through uh, maybe Ruth can help me. Where we leave off, Ruth? Verse eighteen. Verse eighteen. Okay. So, um, if you allow me to, I'm going to read this. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, my brethren. And what I realize from James when he's writing there, he's not writing to just everyday people, but he's writing to the church at large. Count it all joy when you fall into divers or various temptations because they're going to come. Knowing this, that the trying of our faith worketh patience, let patience have for perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace and the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And he says, Do not err, my beloved brethren. For my gathering in this first part of this book of James is that God has put everyone on the same level, rich, poor, uh, you know, big, little, small, whatever. We're all on the same level. God does not look and love any one person more than he loves another. Now, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments and I will come and make my abode with you. So if you want God to dwell inside of you, then love God and love your brother. That is the commandment that Jesus gave us uh, before he went back to heaven. Because it says, For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God, if you get any good gifts at all, I was listening to Chris a. I'm a little bit coming here this afternoon, and he was talking about the gifts that we get, the things that God pours out upon us are Things, if it's good, it come from God, all right? And you need to realize that. Don't think because you are strong and vibrant and whatever that you worked hard 
that you got all that stuff on your own. God gave it to you. Uh, you can be thankful that God gave you the strength to work your job or whatever, but don't ever take the credit for the gifts that you have. God gave them to us, and he can as quickly take them away as we have discovered when reading in the Old Testament when the children of Israel turned their back on God, God sold them into other nations. Those nations came in, overtook them, and made slaves out of them. We as Americans need not think that it can't happen to us. I think we're at the crossroads of our life right now, and uh, as I was reading recently uh, of how that it's coming to, a, in fact, I was reading a story, I think it was in, in fact, let me show you this book that I, I'm recommending that everyone get. Um, it's called uh, Return of the Gods, and uh, I think when you read this, you'll discover a lot of things that are going on in our world are happening because of our rejection of God. Uh, so, uh, but I was reading in this book, Talking about, a, I forget what I was going to say now. There was a story. There was a story about something. Oh, gosh. That's what I get for doing the commercial. <laughs> It'll come back. Yeah, but all, all, all our gifts do come from God. So I, I just, I want to be thankful for that, uh, that God gives us these gifts. I was going to underline some things. Uh, and I forgot my book. I had it all underlined to bring it, and then I forgot my book. So I stopped by and bought another one, but I don't have it underlined in this book. So uh, you said you read a story. You, were, you said you read a story. You was going to share that story. With right, us. but I can't remember what the story was. Was it in that book? Yeah, it was in this book. But okay. I'm sorry. I repent. Sackcloth and ashes. That's fine. Next week. All right, next week I'll try to, to come up. If it comes to me, I'll share it with you, all right? But uh, of his own will began he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures or of his creation. Uh, all those that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord have become, you're, you're a first fruit. You're not fully grown yet. You're not completely... Uh, Without fault yet, there's still going to be struggles and battles that you're going to have from time to time. Uh, but when we when we come to Christ and He comes into our heart and into our life, He changes us into His image if we'll allow Him to. All right. Uh, Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. You know, when you, when you come to Jesus, things, if, if things change in you like they're supposed to, um, you're not always opinionated. You're not always saying that I'm always right. Uh, you're, you're not always wanting to be up front. You're just trying to humble yourself before God and, and men and be the light that Jesus has asked you to be. And uh, so we learn how to keep our tongue what it says here, let a man be swift to hear, and slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Um, I've known people that have been children of God that it seems like some of these things never resonate with them. Um, if they had a bad temper, it seems like they hold on to it for a while. Uh, if they had a for lack of a better way to put it, if they had a big mouth, they still got one. You know, they, 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 they're always opinionated. And yet, as a child of God, if I'm, you know, always at the place where I'm listening, all right? Um, in fact, let me read that scripture again. Wherefore, my beloved brother, they're going to be swift to hear, so to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So, if I'm angry all the time and I'm causing problems all the time, uh, I'm really not doing what the Lord would really want me to do, am I? No. Yeah. Ruth, you got something? It has taken me 50 years to learn to obey that one. 
the scripture right there. Yeah. So, so it's a process. Sure. sure. And, it and it had to be that I wanted to do it. You know. Yeah. The apostle addressed it. Paul addressed it as all also. When I want to do good, evil is always present. I'm, every time I think I've arrived, then I realize I haven't. You know, every time I think I've come to a place where that I can be better, something happens that shows me I'm not there yet. And yet, you keep striving. You know, Paul said, "I press toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus." In other words, he was saying to me that, you know, I'm trying to become as much like Christ as is absolutely possible. I fail at it, I fall down from time to time, I don't always hit it exactly like I should, but I'm striving to become as much Christ-like as is possible. And, and that only happens, and, and please understand the way I'm going to say this, that only happens if you're an avid student of God's Word, and you're a person that prays and seeks God. Because you're not going to be able to do this on your own. That's true. I don't care how strong you think you might be, Without the help of the Lord, you just can't do it. I, I've learned that myself. And so it's like when we preach sometimes, when we stand in front of a congregation of people that stand up in the pulpit, um, we sometimes look as gentle as a little lamb. But then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes on us and we sound like a roaring lion. And what we're doing is we're proclaiming the truth of the gospel. And if there was ever a time that the truth of the gospel needs to be preached, it's now. We, we can't just play the game any longer. I think too many people are just playing the game. As long as I can get to heaven, that's kind of like a uh, fellow that we've listened to in the past, Glenn Hiles. You know, uh, this, uh, I don't want to be wrong in my understanding of, of who God is in my life. And um, praise the Lord. Pray for me. I lost my train of thought again. You're still <laughs> tired from your trip. Pardon me? You're still tired from your trip. Well, that's possible. Plus, I worked hard a couple of days ago. <laughs> but uh, you just got so much coming out, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it said, be ye doers of the word. Uh, somebody got something you got to say? You need to say something? I'm, I'm looking at you. No. No comment? Okay. Great. <laughs> but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You it's, skipped 21. Pardon me? You skipped verse 21. I did. Or for. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity, which is a big word that means abundance <laughs> of naughtiness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Uh, be ye doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving your own selves. I have to do what the Word says, even when it's hard. Does that make sense? Because sometimes it is hard just to do the Word that God did. Just like you were saying with a few minutes ago, it took me how many years? Fifty. Fifty years to, to catch that one verse, fifty years, slow to speak, slow to wrath. I haven't mastered it yet. No. <laughs> No, but you know, you know we've worked on it. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not perfect by no means. I, I you know, but I'm trying to hear the voice of God. I I just I got behind here in the back street this after, this evening, and I was just broken about what's going on in our world. I just and uh, I started thinking, Lord, a, a political party is not going to change the sin that's running rampant no. in our world. Um, I think sometimes people get this opinion, let's go back the way it used to be. But, you know, I'm thinking, do we really want to? 
I mean, I'm, I'm all for prosperity. I'm all for us being blessed beyond measure. But when our prosperity and all the stuff that we have takes precedence over our relationship with God, is it really a blessing? I mean, when you stop and think about it, people have time for everything but God. I mean, I, I can see that just from looking in here tonight. You know, that people say, why don't you start a Bible study? So we did. And yet folks don't come. How hungry are you for the Lord? How, how much do we really want of God? How much can we stand of God in our lives? I, yeah. Well, that's, that should be our cry. I want more, I want more, I want more. But yet, then all of a sudden, that starts to cut into other stuff. Doesn't it? You know? We all could have found something else to do tonight. If it wasn't nothing more than sit home and relax. But something in us has to... I, I don't know what it's going to take. You know, I was praying about it tonight. What, what's it going to take to, to cause hunger to come into people's lives that they, they want more of the Lord? Because, I mean, I've been reading in the book of Judges, and it's just mind-boggling to me how God would bless them, give them a judge to deliver them, and then as soon as that judge died, they went right back to worshiping Baal and Asheroth and all those other gods went back into the sexual perversions that they were in before the judge came and then stuff would go wrong and then they'd cry out to God again and God give them another deliverer and another judge and he would come and he, they would have like, like 40 years of just peace and prosperity things would be great and then as soon as that judge died next thing you know they're going right back to the same old thing again we're a forgetful bunch you know, and I've heard it said, and I've said it myself, we leak. We let the stuff that's really good for us leak out. And the stuff that's really bad for us, we imbibe it. We just let it come in in droves. Yes, Joe, you have a comment. Yeah, and you may not agree with this, and I'm okay. fine if you don't, and I'll gladly correct it. But um, me as a Christian, I love the fact that we have this Bible study. And it, it makes me very, very happy. It's a more intimate setting. You know, we get some back and forth stuff. We all share our opinions. I love that. Right. But me as a pastor under you, I'm offended by the fact that people aren't here and people aren't coming. It offends me. And not in a way that's um, offensive to me personally, but it's offensive to me in the fact that what does it take to get people to, and you were talking about judges, but what does it take for people to get to the place of well, I'm praying and I got this healing. I'm praying I got this miracle. I'm praying this. I'm praying that. I'm praying the other. And it's come through. Thanks, God. I'll be at wherever I'm at. Where is the commitment on our end? And, and I'm offended by that. I'm, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me that's not showing the proper commitment. I, I don't know. And if I'm not, then, you know, God forgive me and show me the right way. But I'm offended for, I'm offended for, for God. I'm offended for our ministry. I'm offended for the people who do come. I'm offended by it. And, and, and it's not like I'm angry offended. I'm just... You're disappointed. No, it's beyond disappointed. I'm offended. Okay. I'm offended. It offends me that we are a Christian church and we're, we come together on Sunday and we say we love God and we say we love Pastor Ron we say we love this ministry but people don't show up and it offends me. And, and if it's by Facebook, if you're watching by Facebook and you can't come, I'm sorry to hear that and I don't mean to be a, offensive to you but if you're able to come and you're not coming... That offends me. And, and and maybe I shouldn't say that, and if I'm out of line, then I apologize, but it offends me because there is goodness that's going on in this church, and God wants to move through us with goodness and wants to show his love and his mercy and his compassion with us. Jesus said the same thing. <clears throat> he said the, the fields are white to harvest, yeah. mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Yeah. And he realized that when he walked the earth that his 12 disciples turned the world upside down because they had a real, and please don't get mad at me if you're watching by Facebook, but they had a real encounter with God. And sometimes I question, and I'm like you, Joe, I, I'm somewhat bothered. I, 
I can't say I'm offended to the place where I'm angry. No, I'm not angry. But I'm just, you know, I wonder what it's going to take. Uh, I see tragedy come to people's lives, and then they show up for three or four Sundays. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the tragedy passes, they're back in the world. And I don't want to be crass nor insensitive to what people have to do. I mean, we all have our jobs, we all have our homes, we all have everything that we're trying to take care of. Sure. Uh, but sometimes sacrifices, you know, the Bible said, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which, and, and I like the way it puts it, it says, which is your reasonable, reasonable. service. Reasonable. Yeah. Not extraordinary. We're not trying to be unreasonable. Yes. But we're asking the question. There was a time in American history, uh, and a lot of folks don't know this, but there was a time in history that you could not build a building in America that was taller than the church. Hmm. That's true. And the reason being is that the church was to be the focal point of the community, and you should be able to see the steeple of the church no matter where you lived. And people would get up on Sunday and they would flock themselves to that building of that church. Uh, they would go and pray, they would sing their hymns, they would do all these things. But little by little, as God blessed us, and God poured out his favor upon us, all of a sudden, we didn't need God anymore, and all of a sudden, the church kind of got hidden in between the tall skyscraper buildings. You know, I was noticing when I was driving to North Carolina, I was pointing out some of these churches with their steeples that reached, I mean, old, old churches with the steeple reached so high. Uh, I said, yep, that's the way it was designed to be years ago. But, you know, as early as the 1920s, America started deteriorating and started going in the other direction. In fact, it probably was happening before that, but still. Uh, and then wars came, our soldiers died, things happened, the Civil War showed up. Uh, all this stuff that we were doing that God did not appreciate, I don't think God ever wanted for us to have a nation full of slaves and so he put a man in office and I believe he put him in office Abraham Lincoln said Lord if you will help me these were his words you will help me I will smite this thing and but they say more people died in the Civil War than in World War one and two put together so brother against brother you know it's like the scriptures when brother turn against brother and sisters no longer agree. I mean, you hear those songs saying, and yet the those things happened. They did. Brother against brother, sister against sister. I know, I know family members that won't even talk to each other. It's a shame that we live in a world where that we've lost our love for our fellow man. Yes. And our hunger to have them get saved. Our hunger for them to know the joy and the love that we know. Right. Hunger's got to be there. That maybe that's why I'm offended. I don't know. Right. And I'm not angry offended. I'm just. It provokes me. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. But you can be provoked without being angry as well. I think. Yeah. But I. But I also believe this, Joe. We have to be the example. We do. You know, you, you, if you're going to talk about people being faithful, then be faithful yourself. Right. If you're going to talk about people being in a place when they're supposed to be in a place, be there. Amen. Don't expect somebody to do your job. And I think sometimes that's what we do. Well, that'd be a good job for so-and-so, or that'd be a good job for so-and-so. It's like, wait a minute. Why are we passing the buck? If the burden is in our heart, and we're looking at somebody else to do it, then maybe we're missing the mark. Maybe we're the ones that are supposed to be doing the job in the first place. Yes, sir. Our, I think it was Max Licato, had made a good statement. And it made me think about you. And you just said it. So I was like, I have to say this. But he was saying that, you know, the word says, you know, and the prophet Joel said, in the last days I'll pour out my spirit. And he was talking about 
the Holy Spirit throughout the New Testament where God is pouring. He, he doesn't give little drops. He pours. Right. He pours out of the Spirit. Right. And, and you know, so he was talking about us being the recipients of that pouring out. Right. And he said that it's okay if you leak because what's coming out should what should be leaking is that anointing. Right. And so if you're leaking, but you're getting filled back, you're pouring it's pouring back in. Right. That's a good thing. Yeah. And so I'm I'm off a little bit what we were on. But it, I'm just kind of going back to where you said no, no, you leak. But I think that you know I have that same I had that same thought as well. So I'm not not that I'm not agreeing with you guys that but I think that by coming, by praying, by like interceding, by the Holy Spirit pouring into us, I think it's just something that will come out of us. Right. That either it'll draw men away or draw them closer. And you know, I, I, I can say that be by being here, mm -hmm. God is doing something. That you know, I'm excited, and I should go home and I tell my wife, you know, she can't be here tonight, but she's excited about coming next week because of the things I tell her we're doing, and she's, you know, but so does that make sense to you? So sometimes what we're getting out of this, what's pouring into us, we got to pour back out. Right. We got to leak it out. We got to, we got to, you know, we got to kind of make people say, hey, listen, you know, not just that you need to be here, but this is something you're missing. The Holy Spirit's moving in our Wednesday night services. The Holy Spirit's moving in our prayer time. And he really is. He, you know, it, it was just a few people that turned the world upside down. Right. God's just looking just for hearts that are open to him. Right. You know, I, I, like Dave Wilkerson said, you know, I, I, God's more concerned about winning me all to him. Me all to him instead of me winning all the world to right. Christ. Right. You know, until God gets a hold of my heart and searches me. You know, then I think it's going to permeate out of me into other people, right. and that's my desire, and right. that's what I think. It is discouraging, but I think we need to keep doing what we're doing, and right. keep seeking God and letting God pour into us, right. so we can be those vessels when we walk out of here. You know, not saying we're putting a feather in our cap, but man, it's just been good to be with brothers and sisters of the Lord. Wow, we had a good time. And, we talked about that Sunday here, you know. It was a good time to be here for prayer and just, you know, so that's my thought on that. You know, well, it's like me when I went to North Carolina. I didn't just want to go to a family. I, I could, wouldn't bother me one day if I missed the family reunion. Yeah. But what I wanted to do was be with the family. Yeah. No, not so much a reunion, but to be with the family and hopefully impart something that would encourage them. There's a, uh, Bart's uh, cousin David has a daughter named Kelly. And uh, 15 years ago, she was diagnosed with uh, stage four cancer. And I was down there, and, uh, and no credit to me, but I mean, I, had to, you know, I just asked people to pray. And I, I laid my hands on her and I prayed for her. And I walked up to her when I got down there, and I said, Kelly, I said, you are a miracle. I said, God touched you and healed your body. Amen. And she's cancer free. That was her daughter, was, her daughter was a year old when she got cancer, and her daughter was down there with her, and she's 15 years old. Praise God. So it's been 15 years ago. And I just kept looking at her saying, God touched you. God oh, healed yeah, you. Amen. And she got big tears in her eyes. She goes, I know. She goes, I know he did. I believe. I believe. And so it was like, if nothing else, to see her yes. at that family reunion was a blessing to me. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, just to, to see that, that she's healthy. That yeah. she's, that God decided that you're not coming home. It's mercy. You know, yeah. Mercy. Patience, law, whatever you want to call it, but uh, with the healing power of God, and, and it just it went all over me when I seen her. I just said, that. and I had to walk up to her and say, "I'm so glad you're okay. You are a miracle." Yeah. You know, and you know, God does some things like that for people, just like we were talking earlier about 
Bonnie uh, Stevens. Yeah. Bonnie's decided to just let cancer run its course. She's gone off of chemo, she's gone off of uh, radiation, radiation mm -hmm. and they've now they found more cancer in her throat. And so, but then Pastor Chris said, well, well, we've heard those stories before. Well, you just heard one, <laughs> you know, and then, but God can take and heal her just like that Amen. and, and Amen. remove every polyp, whatever it is that's there, every tumor that's there and give her a clean bill of health, you know, but his will be done, I guess, is, is where I'm at with all of that, you know, trust God for it, yes. Again, you know, I look forward to tonight all day long. Right. I did too. I look forward to being here all day long. And I just when I showed up, I wasn't disappointed. I was I was happy. Right. Like I God I was happy. You know, I was not God I he did not, you know, let me down. It was like his spirit. The Bible says his spirits kind of draw you. Right. And you know, I think in, you know, when we draw an eye to God, he'll draw an eye to us. You know, but I think there's a, a little contingency there. It's like you do your part, I'll do my part. But right. I look forward to it all day. Yeah. It's like all day. I just, you know, what I mean, I was just, I was looking forward to being here and thanking God for making a way, an opportunity. You know, and uh, so I, I was looking forward to seeing whoever was here. You know, right. and uh, so I didn't really expect Ruth because her sister's passed away and she's got to go to Kentucky. This morning I said I gotta go to church tonight. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So I mean, it's wonderful. Exactly. Yeah, I tried my best to occupy my time today. I got up, pray, and read the word and stuff, and then I just got busy just trying to run the day past so I could get here. And I don't know. I, I'm excited about what God's been doing in my heart. Amen. Okay. Amen. I, I don't know what He's doing in other people's hearts. I can't worry about that. I can't worry about who comes and who doesn't come. I, you know, I used to stand by the door back years ago when we had prayer and wonder who's going to show up. And I remember the Holy Spirit said to me, what are you coming for? I said, well, Lord, I come to talk to you. He says, well, then quit worrying about who ain't here. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. You know, and the Lord is here. Yeah. I, I know he is. He is. I'm like you when I started to pray tonight. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm weeping. It's like, I'm and I'm and I don't even I'm not even praying in in, in, language, in uh, English. I'm praying in tongues, walking around here, weeping. And, uh, just I don't know. And this relationship with Jesus Christ is supposed to get better and better, Amen. Amen. and yet some people will not allow it to. Somehow, some way, they're holding back for whatever reason, and I I I, I don't know why, but. I do understand it to a certain point because I've had that happen to me. Yes. Well, I, I, yes. I don't want to be that intense, you know. I'm just going to kind of take it easy here. Mm -hmm. and, you know, after a while, it's like, you know what? If you leave a crack in the door, the devil's coming in. Spirit is going, the flesh is weak. Yeah. But I mean, it, the yeah, little hunger, even with those moments, not have those moments, I'm sorry for bursting out. But That's okay. I've had those moments where I look, you know, I just, I got nothing. I don't have anything left. I don't. I don't care to do this right now. I don't. Whatever it is that's going on in my world, in that moment, that hunger comes back, man, and it never stops. It never stops. It never goes away. No matter what I went through, no matter when I was separated from God, it was always there. And I don't. That's the part that I don't understand. That's the part. It's a never-ending. It's a never-ending hunger, too, right? You could be hungry in that moment, and then you're like, oh, wait a second. I mean, how many times have you looked up, let's say, one topic or one verse in the Bible, and two and a half hours later, you're still looking through the Bible, especially back when we had the Strong's Concordance, right? And you go, you go open it up, and you're looking up the word love or whatever, and there's 550,000 different ones, and you're looking all these up, trying to get to the one you were trying to find. You find it, and you're like, hey, but there's still another 15 more. I want to look yeah. those up, too. And all of a sudden, you're just bouncing. I mean, that hunger, it's just, that, that's what upsets me. It's not... And you're right, Pastor Chris, and I'm not trying to say I'm not happy for who we have here, and I didn't look forward as I do. I don't understand how other people couldn't. That's where I'm confused. I think it's just prayer. I think we got to well, keep Jesus praying. Jesus said, he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Then say, might be. You get hungry and thirsty enough for it, he'll fill you with his righteousness. And in his word, we find our righteousness. Right. Because 
And that's why, to me, the word is so important. You cannot just neglect the word of God. No matter what's going on when you get up in the morning or whatever you took, take your time for your devotions, don't let anything keep you from it. You know, let it become a habit to the point that if I don't do this, I'm going to die. We used to, when we were in church on Sunday, on Sunday night, would tarry before the Lord. Well, I found out that works for me. If I tarry of the mornings, put on the blood songs, play them, and tarry before the Lord, and tell them, I want more of you, Lord. I need more. Amen. I need Amen. more to get me through this day, Amen. this presence and the excitement. I love it. Right. Amen. Right. It's something that we need to somehow, some way, instill in our young people. Because we're going to pass off the scene. And if we don't get some young people excited about Jesus, who's going to carry this gospel? Who's going to stand in that pulpit? Who's going to do the work of the ministry? I, it's, it's troubling to me. children, I, I see how the enemy can just start drawing you away a little at a time. Just, well, he didn't come this week or she didn't show up that week and next thing you know, they didn't come two weeks and then you're going okay, are they okay? And then you want to call but you don't want to be offensive and just like with, with Tim when he first was gone it was like we were all calling, we were all trying and yet it's got to come from God God's got to pull that person back in. No matter, we can pray for them. We can seek God on their behalf. But God's got to pull them back in. You know, Amen. Paul said, what do you say? I, I have uh, planted and polished water, but God gave the increase. Amen. I, I just need to learn, learn how to be a better planter or, or a better waterer. Does that make sense? No. You know, that I, I, when I speak, people sense God. Not that I'm looking for the praise of men, I'm not, but it's just I want to be able to speak as an oracle of God so that when people hear us, they hear him. Yes. Because if they don't hear him, then we're just babbling idiots. We're just sounding brass and tingling cymbals. We don't have any input or, or impact on people's lives. And I want to have impact on people. Life. So if I'm going to have impact on people's lives, and listen to me, you watching my Facebook, you're going to have impact on people's lives. You've got to live right yourself. You've got to be clean before God yourself, because there's going to come opportunities where that you are asked to go do something, and if you're kind of just playing over on the edge here, you're not going to have anything to say, because you're too concerned about what you're going through. I want to be clean enough that if someone calls and said, can you go see Sultan? Yeah, I'll go see him. I'm going to talk to him. That's, but that's, that's an everyday thing. You just, every day you get up, spend time with him, pray, seek his face. You don't have to literally be on your knees to do so. I mean, you've seen it. We walk around here praying and seeking God. I sit in my dining room chair in the morning and read and Sit there and wait for God to speak to me. I want to hear what he has to say. So, but It's like when I did that funeral before I left last Wednesday. I, uh, Sister Lois's daughter had passed away. And the only word that came to me uh, was suddenly. And I think I tried to share that. That suddenly things happen. And you, you're not prepared for it sometimes. You're not aware it's coming. But I want to be at the place in my life that if something suddenly happens, that I can say, even so come Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, because sometimes things suddenly happen. And, uh, but, you know, you were there. You, I, I preached the gospel. I told the people they need to get right with God. Yes, you did. I can't, you can't play the game and you can't just, well, I want to be nice. No, I don't want to offend anybody. I always think of what Bob the Baptist years ago, there's a guy named Bob the ba Baptist, he was a preacher on Bourbon Street in New Orleans and uh, he would say, you know, he preached hard and people say, well, you're going to scare people. He said, well, what am I going to scare them to hell number two? 
Oh, that's good. Bob Harrington. <laughs> Bob Harrington. Huh? Bob Harrington. Bob Harrington, yeah. Yeah, Bob Harrington. Yeah, he was called Bob the Baptist. I see. Yeah. He, uh, Come on. he was something else. But he knew how to present the gospel in a way that, that worked on Bourbon Street to all those people that were just out there. Bourbonites. Bourbonites. Uh, Bourbonites. <laughs> Bourbon. Bourbonites. Yes, sir. Scripture says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteousness, or our righteousness is in Christ. Not right. me any better than anybody else. Right. But the effectual fervent, it's effectual, it's something that's beating after the heart of God. And fervency is consistency. It's a fervent, right. it's a fervent drawing near to God. So I feel. I read it, I've been reading the book, a couple of different books, but the book by Ian Bounds, you know, The Power of Prayer. Yeah, and he said the same thing. I actually I think Tozer got the saying from him. I don't know who was before who, because he actually says the same thing. But he says that talking about preachers, preachers have no right to talk to men about God until they talk to God about men. Right. You know, he was just the way he was that sticks the Greek, in my heart. Yeah, and then he quoted a thing from Payson, basically saying the same thing. And it's like, God, you know, um, this is what you were saying. You know, there's got to be an unction in us, uh, and, right. and only that comes, you know, through the Holy Spirit. You know, and so that's my prayer: is that when we leave here, you know, when we go through the week or we talk to people in the church. That there is a genuineness that when we convey what's going on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, that it's something that's not just puffed up. Right. That it's something that people. It's real. Yeah. yeah. People can sense it. Like, and I think you know, and then you got the whole. The, the, it's just the spirit, you know, that's just become so carnal. That's just taking the place right. of, you know, God in people's lives, putting him first their desire. So that's what we got, we're up against, we gotta pray, because we were there at one time too. Yeah. You know, and uh, we battle with that all the time. You yeah. know, there's a, there's a battle just trying to stay spiritual. You, we know that. Yeah. There's a battle, there's a battle. And, you know, I, I need your prayers. You need my prayers, I pray. I, I do. I pray for all of us. I pray for Joe. God, help help him. Help him today. Help him. Do. I do, but I do. I do. I, I'm not just saying it. I do. Every day I pray. God, you know, bring them to my heart. If God brings them to your heart, then you better pray. Right. There's some people that you just kind of got on your list. But if God puts them on your heart, you better just drop what you're doing and just say, shout out their name, man. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. Just, right. Just, just do it. <laughs> just do it. You know, but uh, I think that's... That's what I, I guess that's what I love about being able to pray in the Spirit, is that I feel like the Holy Spirit will have me praying for things and people that I may have forgotten about. Yeah, right. You know, so I, when I'm praying in the Spirit, I'm not always understanding all of that, but I know I sense and feel His presence when I'm doing it. And whether I'm reaching into the heavenlies or reaching across town, uh -huh. With my prayer, I, as long as God's pleased with what I'm doing, I, I'm okay with that. You yes. know, I just. Uh, well, when you start, what about when you start? When you're praying like that, and you start praying for people you never even met or heard, even heard. Well, I've done that. What, what I'm saying though is, you get to a certain place in God, where it's unending. The praying could be unending. Right. And and yeah. you don't want it to end until He stops it. Right. Yeah. And then you're like praying about stuff. You're like, what is this that's going through your head? But you still keep praying. Yeah. And then for me personally, like a lot of it, I would just forget. But the, except for the exceptional things that just kind of stuck out in my head. I'm right. like, and then I feel after the prayer is over with, so blessed and honored that God chose me in that unction, mm -hmm. in that moment with the Holy Spirit to be able to pray like that. Right. You know, it just makes you fall in love with them all over again. Amen. Right. Amen. You know, it's just, and it's, 
why me? I, I don't feel like I'm worthy for any of that. You know what I mean? You start going through all that stuff and then, then you start to realize that you, know, you are worthy because he's called you to be worthy. I mean, it's just never the, the unending love of God and the, the, the simplicity and the complexity at the same time and how it's a cycle that, that just continues to grow you and, 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 and hopefully grows me and, and, and our hearts expand to the point where right. we love everyone. Like I said, I'm offended, not angry. Right. I'm offended because I, I'm offended because this. It's like if you draw a straight line, it seems like people get to this slice right here, the very beginning. But there's another ninety percent, man, that you're still here, and that's why I want people again. I'm offended they won't take the step. Right. Not that they're that I'm mad at them or right. they should be here, like you were saying. I don't care who shows up, but because of the ones that show up, I believe the, the the four of us tonight anyway are hungry. We want God. But there, and we go after that extra ten percent and take those steps. But I want everyone else to do the same thing because right. of what they're missing, not because of what I want, yeah. or, or or to make make the church grow to this big. Heap. I want them to get what they're missing. Right. It's sort of like tithing. Like you give ten percent, and that's good enough. Well, no, it's not. He wants it all. Right. He wants all of us in our prayers. He wants all of us in our church. He wants all of us in our commitment, not just to come to church and say, "Hey, by the way, I went to church on Sunday," and, and tap somebody on the shoulder and tell them that. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. or I, I prayed, uh, I read three verses a day. I mean, it's not like that. No. There, yeah, that's the beginning. What about the rest? Yeah. It's, it's, if we spend the rest of our lives in prayer and reading the Bible, it's still would have made up time and he deserves more. Right. But we decided that this, uh, whatever we want to do is enough. That offends me. I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't mean I to guess, be, I don't you know, come across harsh. I don't approach the word anymore just to read. I approach it to eat. Yeah. What are you saying to me in this story? Sure. What what, what should I hear? Yeah. Right. You know, it's like Tim said this week in that message we listened to. I don't want to go to heaven by myself. No. I want to take as many people as I possibly can. And yet, I feel like sometimes our voice is so small and so insignificant. And yet, I don't realize that God can take the smallest thing and do really large things. You know, Gideon, the almighty man of valor. What are you talking about? Man? I, I'm the least in the kingdom. I'm over here hiding behind in the bushes. I want nothing to do with this. I want nothing to do with this. Yeah. <laughs> but, but God can take the insignificant things and use them, the, the people would call it insignificant, and use them for his glory. For sure. Yes. Amen. You know, Tim, in that message, I don't know if you Great listen. message. He, I mean, perfect example of what you said. You know, he said, you know, I, I was at, at wherever, California, at one of the, he was a... Is it a professional baseball Yeah, professional team? baseball team. Anyway, he said, I took the exact same message two days later and preached it at a soup kitchen. Right. Huh. He's, you know, he yeah. said, I didn't, you know, do any different. Right. You know, I said, they're just men. And they still needed that message. Right. And it was the same message. He didn't, he didn't put all kinds of stuff on it for the baseball team. Right. He just, you know, he preached the salvation message. You need Christ. You need, you know, and uh, I admired what he had said. Yeah. You know, that. Uh, and if God asked us to do something like that, say, us three, would you go do this? Oh, well, I've been praying that all since I heard that message. There'd be something. Open up a soup kitchen. I'll go. But, but there would be something. <laughs> right. But I don't know about you, but there would be something in me saying, well, I'm not worthy to do that. Oh, yeah, right. But, I mean, if God opens but, that door. Yeah. Well, we've done that with mission work for many years before. You know, we haven't gone anywhere in a while. But if God opened the door, we went through it. Amen. Over and over again. Yeah. I don't know how many times... We ended up on the other side of the world uh, sharing the gospel with people we didn't know, yeah. but fell in love with. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was amazing the times that God opened doors for us to be able to, to do the work of the ministry. And oh, yet, yeah. is there a future in that? Is, is there something more coming? I, I pray so. Even, even if I don't get to go, I would love to send you or you or you or anyone else that and get behind them. You know, we I'm not boasting, but we sent an offering to Rolinda and Jim because I feel like the work that they're doing is worth the offering. Amen. Yeah. You know? And Amen. I got a 
Amen. Uh, emailed back from her. She goes, I can't believe you all sent us this offering. It's going to pay for Jim's trip to India. Praise and God. I went, Hallelujah. 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 We go, even if we're not there, yeah, we're having a part. And just yeah. like everybody that gave money to send us from place to place, yeah. they had an active part in seeing what happened while we were there. And did you get the email from Jesse? Uh, not recently. I mean, not since the last one I got. This this one came to me two days ago. He was having a baptizing, and he was showing all the people that he baptized. And I was oh, like, Praise God! Wow! Wow! They turned that big pool into a cross, and yeah. they baptized in the cross. Yeah. And it, it's just I texted him back. I said, It's so wonderful that. You're able to do what your dad wanted to do and, and still carry on. The, I forget how I said it to him, but I was so proud that wow. he was still carrying on the ministry that the Lord allows us to be a part of. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we're not there, but but he said right in the thing, thanks for supporting us. And it was like, I, I just like, whoo. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, Amen. I shouted inside. It was like, thank you, God, that... Even though we can't be there or are not there for whatever reason, still the work is going on. And I looked at the building behind him where he was doing the baptizing, and it's like, it looks like a big old ministry center. I mean, it's just amazing what God has done over there. And I'm, I'm thrilled that we've been able to be a part of it. Yes. It, I mean, it didn't Paul, that's the same with Paul when he was talking about Timothy or, you know, any of, the, any of them, he, he's like, you know, even though I'm not there, I'm there. Right. You know, even the, you know, in some of his letters, I can't, you know, right. quote it right off. But even though I'm not there, I'm there. And this is exciting for me. This is, right? So, like he, yeah. like you said, some plants, some water, but God gives increase. Yeah. That's the way it was for me Sunday. I'm driving back to North Carolina, and I got the service playing through my uh, truck. Uh -huh. You know, hear the singing, hear the preaching. I mean, I'm listening to it all the way. Yeah. I listened to it all the way to the end. Amen. You know, and it was Amen. like, I was grateful that, and I didn't know if it would even come up. Yeah. But all of a sudden it came on the phone. We didn't worship it. Then it was like, I hit the button. <laughs> and, it, and it started. And it was coming through my speakers on my, so I could hear it good. So yeah. it, but, you know, there's, there's. That's how I was in Montana. I'm in the middle of the mountains, man. And I listen to Joe preach coming through the mountains there. I'm like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's like, I'm in the middle of Montana. Look at me. I'm in, but you're right. So it is a blessing that we yes. can. It is. There is a, Some of the technology that it, it can be used for good. Yes. Amen. It a lot be. of it's used for bad, but, but it can be used Amen. for good. Amen. Amen. You know, and you that are, you know, we're going to close this, but if you that are watching tonight, if you gleaned anything from this, that we've been sharing. Understand and know that we want you to become hungry for God. Yes. We want you to get a desire to, to talk to Him Amen. on a regular basis, to let His Word really be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Don't, don't think for one moment, uh, and I know the devil's going to tell you, well, I can't understand that King James English, and I can't understand this or that, but I would encourage you, get you a new living translation, get you a message Bible, I don't, get you something that you can feed your soul with. Amen. Because we need God's help Amen. in every area. And, uh, I have a gateway app is on the phone. There's like 40 different versions of the Bible. On oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, if, if you don't have a, a Bible on your phone, you can load the gateway Bible on your phone. Um, I have the power Bible on my computer. Uh, that I got from a guy a long time ago. In fact, I took 50 copies of it to India and gave it to the pastors over there so that they could, you could study more, get more done with, in less time. So, but, uh, and also, I'm going to say this one more time. If you get a chance to pick up this book, please do so. Read it. I, you know, I, I would like to hear some input from other people, but uh, I read it once and I'm on my way through it again. So, it's called Return of the Gods by Jonathan Kahn. And, uh, Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for our Bible study and the time, Father, just to share your truths. And uh, I want to apologize tonight, Lord, for my mind wandering on things. And 
and forgetting. I just pray that you help me in that area to be able to say what needs to be said when it needs to be said. I pray that you would bless and strengthen us as a church family and help us to draw close to you. Pray for Ruth as she travels yes. here, Lord, this week to Kentucky. Give her travel and mercy, Lord. Take her there safely and bring her back to us. And we'll praise you and thank you for it. And also, Lord, we want to pray for Mom Lois as she's on the mend and getting better. I pray that you just continue to touch her and heal in her body. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name.